Member statements. The member for Niagara West. Speaker, Niagara's, Niagara's families deserve world-class health care, and that's exactly what I'm working on delivering on with Premier Ford. It's why I was so heartened to see Infrastructure Ontario's market update last week, which confirms how our government is making record investments in health care, long-term care, transportation, education, and other critical infrastructure. In Niagara, this infrastructure includes up to a billion dollars for the Garden City Skyway twinning in St. Catharines, another billion dollars for a new South Niagara Hospital in Niagara Falls, and hundreds of millions of dollars for a new West Lincoln Memorial Hospital in Grimsby. Now, in addition to the Infrastructure Ontario update on projects in the region, I recently had the privilege of announcing over $2 million in community provincial supports for critical infrastructure upgrades and repairs at our local hospitals. This funding is part of the government's new investment of over $182 million provided through the Health Infrastructure Renewal Fund and the Community Infrastructure Renewal Fund to 131 hospitals and 65 community health service providers across this province. Niagara Health will be receiving over a million dollars, while Hotel Du Shaver Health and Rehabilitation Centre in St. Catharines will receive over $600,000 in provincial support this year through this Health Infrastructure Renewal Fund. Additionally, the Oak Centre in Welland is going to be receiving $41,000. Arid Recovery Home in Fort Erie will receive $27,000, and Wayside Street House of St. Catharines will receive $29,000 through the Community Infrastructural Renewal Fund. Now, in addition to the provincial funding supports for these important investments, the Haldeman War Memorial Hospital is also receiving over $200,000. These critical investments demonstrate our commitment to building capacity and ending hallway health care, implementing the most ambitious plan for hospital expansion in Ontario's history. Thank you very much. Member Statements, Member for Niagara Centre. Thank you, Speaker. It's an honour to rise today to speak about an incredible program in my riding of Niagara Centre, the Holy Trinity Breakfast Program. This Thursday, December 1st, the breakfast program, which serves meals daily to those in need, will be celebrating its first anniversary. I was honoured to join the hardworking volunteers serving brec breakfast when they first launched uh, this program last year. The success of the program can be attributed to the over 200 dedicated volunteers and countless supporters in the community. Holy Trinity is also getting ready to host their sixth annual Christmas dinner program. Last year, they handed out over 330 meals to those in need and are preparing to hand out over 400 this year. Beyond the Streets, an organization I have mentioned many times, works in collaboration with the Holy Trinity Breakfast Program by finding those experiencing homelessness and connecting them to the program. However, with rising inflation and stagnant wages, donations are becoming more scarce. Holy Trinity Anglican Church Food Bank Coordinator Mary Ellen DuPont recently stated, we can't just rely on our parishioners any longer. We've never had to do this before, but in changing times, we have to change with them. We have reserves, but we're knocking them back. Anyone who would like to volunteer or learn more can contact them on Facebook or through their email at holytrinitywelland at kojiko.net. I hope the members of this House will join me in congratulating Holy Trinity on a successful first year of their program and thanking their dedicated and passionate volunteers. Their community spirit and compassion is truly inspiring and changing lives in Welland. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Perth Wellington. Thank you, Speaker. Today, I rise to congratulate and recognize an amazing young woman from my riding in Perth Wellington. Amira Black is 16 years old, lives in Stratford as an avid swimmer. She recently competed at the World Down Syndrome Swimming Championships in Portugal. Amira was one of the youngest swimmers on Team Canada and one of the only two teenagers that competed. Amira won an outstanding amount of medals, eight medals in total in the junior division, four gold medals in the 100 meter free. 200 meter free, 100 meter backstroke, and 100 meter fly events. And four silver medal speaker in the 500 meter free, 500 meter backstroke, 500 meter fly, and 500 meter individual medley. It's an important note to that many of Amir Amira's times would have placed her in the top 10 of the senior division speaker. Amira will continue to swim in events close to home and pending a Team Can decision, maybe Argentina as well. She's looking forward to the next World Championships in Turkey in 2024. Amira, you did an amazing job representing yourself, Stratford, and Canada. Congratulations again on winning eight medals at the World Championships. I know Stratford and Ontario will be cheering you on for years to come. Go, Amira, go.
Thank you. Member statements. The member for Spadina, Fort York. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On uh, November 26, I attended a, a ceremony at the Holdemore Mel Memorial at Exhibition, Station, uh, Exhibition Place in my riding of Spadina, Fort York. The Holodomor is a genocide committed against the Ukrainian people by the Soviet government that took place between 1932 and 33. The Soviet government came into Ukraine, stole every bit of food. They searched houses and barns to find every bit of food. Then they sealed the borders and let millions of people starve to death. At the memorial, we heard from one of the survivors of this 1932-33 uh, genocide, 95-year-old Mr. Latishko, and he told us of the horrific crimes against humanity that had been committed against Ukraine. When Ukraine was invaded by the <coughs> Russian army on uh, February 24th this year, the people of Ukraine have fought back with incredible courage and resilience because they recognize that this is another, another generation of a Russian uh, government that has come in to complete the genocide that had begun 90 years ago. But the attack on Ukraine is not just a, an attack on Ukraine. It's an attack on democracies everywhere, and democracies around the world are under threat, and from both within and without. And the only way that we can guarantee freedom against oppression and against future genocides is to support the government of Ukraine until the democratic government of Ukraine has, re has been restored to the entire, all of the borders of the Ukrainian country. Thank you. Thank you. Member statements, the member for Cambridge. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today I'd like to share a story about a business in Cambridge that goes far and beyond to assist people suffering from cancer. Rebuilt, rebuilt Fitness and Physiotherapy hosts a free eight-week uh, therapeutic exercise program led, led by this company. For one hour each Tuesday and Thursdays, guests of this generous program are instructed in ways that lead to increased strength, stamina, and flexibility. The program is designed to combat cancer-related fatigue that results from the disease, or from the disease and its aggressive treatments. The program began in 2017 and welcomes all fitness levels and is open to individuals who are in pre-treatment, undergoing treatment, or post-treatment. I would like to share a couple of comments from former people that have gone through this program. A 49-year-old breast cancer survivor had this to say. I would say that within the first three weeks, I could already see the improvement in my mobility of my arm. It was amazing. It was fabulous. A 33-year-old lymphoma survivor whose energy level hit rock bottom, basically, following six months of chemotherapy said, I personally feel 100 times better. I don't think uh, I'll be this go good going back to work if I didn't go through this program. Thank you for the help. So I'd just like to have a shout out for this company and what they've done for the city of Cambridge and the residents. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. The next statement, member for Timiskaming Cochrane. Thank you, Speaker. Last week in, uh, in a question and question period, the Minister of Environment, uh, a question regarding uh, sewage spillage, uh, the Minister of Environment said that he believed in full transparency, actually was requesting an audit. And in that spirit, I would once again like to ask the Minister of Environment for the release of the full documentation of the application and the monitoring documents of a human sewage lagoon located in the township of Armstrong. The people have been asking for the documentation. There has been some legitimate questions raised starting already with the consultation process. I brought this up, the first issue, I brought it up more than a year ago more than a year ago. We don't, at this point, we don't want a technical briefing. We don't want a letter that specifies one issue or another. We want the full documentation so people can actually see for themselves that the ministry is doing what they claim to be doing. Because so far they haven't seen it. There has been too much what, as be, what they're being told isn't the same as what they're seeing on the ground. So, for once and for all, please, in the full spirit of transparency, will the Minister of Environment release the documentation of the sewage lagoon project in the township of Armstrong? Thank you very much. Peter. Thank you very much. 
Member statements. The member for Sault Ste. Marie. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and uh, it's uh, exciting for me to be able to rise and uh, speak. Uh, about uh, something that was uh, quite a lot of fun, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, last, uh, last Saturday, I had the privilege and the pleasure of participating, uh, as we always do as elected officials, in our annual Santa Claus Parade. And uh, the Rotary Club in Sault Ste. Marie uh, hosts the, uh, the Santa Claus Parade. It's a yearly uh, tradition in our community. Unfortunately, for a couple of years, we weren't able to participate in our, in our parade as usual. But, uh, Mr. Speaker, I was very, very proud that during the period of uh, the last a couple of years, I've been stockpiling these little mini sticks and pucks that we uh, we had uh, my office staff put together. Uh, I really want to thank my staff uh, in the office, uh, Kathy Beatty, Jen Belrose, and uh, Edie Suriano, who worked tirelessly putting together all these pucks and sticks. We had 5,000 of them uh, of them on a trailer and uh, went down Queen Street in Sault Ste. Marie. The look on the kids' faces was absolutely out of this world. They were so excited. I really want to thank uh, my wife. Heather, uh, my mom, uh, Lena Romano, and my, my three boys, Jaden Jackson and Jared, who helped in uh, distributing the sticks. And of course, all of my staff, again, Edie, uh, uh, Jen, and, uh, and Kathy as well, uh, Carrie Suriano and Steve Shaw, uh, Jalen and Paige, and uh, also Mike. Special thank you to you all for helping me out. It was a huge success, uh, although I had to run up and down the street quite a bit. We had a blast, the kids had a blast, and it was out absolutely outstanding and so good to have them all back out again. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Ottawa South. Thank you, Speaker. Well, I understand the desire of developers to make a profit by developing the Greenbelt. The thing is, we haven't been elected here to help developers make a profit. We've been elected to define and uphold the greater public interest. It's our responsibility. It's our duty. It's our job. It's not our green belt to give away. It's the people's green belt. The people's green belt plays a unique and invaluable role for the people. It provides safe local farm foods for the people. It protects against flooding, helps filter and clean drinking water for the people. It provides natural space, cleans the air, and allows the earth to breathe for the people. It's the people's green belt. It's not the developer's green belt. It's not the government's green belt. It's not the premier's green belt. It is the people's green belt. All of us bear a heavy responsibility to protect the green belt for the people. Once it's gone, once it's paved over, we're not getting it back. Because, Speaker, we need to remember, no one's making any more land. So we need all of us here to protect and preserve the people's green belt for the people. Thank you, Speaker. We're here. We're here. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Mississauga, Aaron Mills. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Oh. Over the weekend, I had the honour and the privilege to welcome His Grace Bishop Archilidis as the first ever Papal Vicar for the Coptic Orthodox Archdiocese of Toronto. This important historic event at the St. Mark Coptic Orthodox Cathedral was filled with joy and spirituality. May his many years of service be strong, fruitful and peaceful. As the first elected Canadian of Egyptian and Coptic origins, I am proud to see the Coptic Orthodox Archdiocese grow and prosper here in Toronto. Thank you to everyone who worked hard to organize the event and the thousands who are attended, who did attend it. Also, the last couple of weeks, Canada and Ontario welcomed the new Ambassador of Egypt to Canada, His Excellency Ahmed Hafiz, and the new Councillor General, Muhammad, His Excellency Mohammed Fakhri. I had the pleasure of meeting them with the Egyptian community and wish them all the best of their newest appointment. I'm looking forward to our future collaboration to serve Canadian Egyptians here in Ontario and Canada. Mr. Speaker, yesterday I was on a Mississauga tour with the active Minister of Labour, Immigration, Training and Skills Development and the Mississauga's MPPs. He reconfirmed the government mission to help new Canadians to be able to work in their fields and in their careers. With the current shortage of labour in many sectors, we need to tap into the new Canadians who have the right skills and training and expertise to fill that gap. They are here. 
Uh, we need to accelerate their integration, like the IMGs, nurses, skilled workers, the system in dire need for their skills. After many years of inaction from the previous governments, on this side of the House and this government, we did workers working for workers one and two. We are the only one that getting it done. I would like to thank the Minister and the Premier for their unprecedented initiatives. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. The next statement, the member for Simcoe Gray. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's a pleasure to rise in the House this morning. Speaker, last Friday, November 25th, was the United Nations International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women, which starts 16 days of activism and will end on December 10th, the UN International Human Rights Day. Speaker, this November marks Women's Abuse Prevention Month and the 10th anniversary of the Wrapped in Courage campaign in Ontario. Gender-based violence agencies across our, pro our province ask community leaders to wear purple, a scarf or a tie to show their commitment to ending femicide and all forms of gender-based violence in our province. I would like to pay tribute to two non-profit uh, non organizations that provide critical shelter and support services for the women and their children experiencing domestic violence in my riding of Simcoe Gray. My sister's place in Alliston has provided shelter and traditional services, traditional services and supports to women and their children in the region since 1987. My friend's house has been supporting women and their children in South Georgian Bay, including Collingwood, Wasega Beach, Clearview, and the town of Blue Mountains since 1991. Speaker, I'm proud to say that our government provided significant financial supports to both organizations during the pandemic through the Resilient Communities Fund, with grants of $72,500 my, to my sister's place and $101,000 to my friend's house. Speaker, the courage of a woman alone is not enough to end gender-based violence. It takes the support of an entire community to end this devastating violence together. And I know that all of us in this House commit to doing that. Thank you. Thank you. Introduction of visitors. 